If you're embarrassed about your drug or alcohol problems, there's no need to worry because you aren't alone. There are plenty of animals around the world that abuse drugs and alcohol, and in fact there's so many that I've already made two videos on the subject. If you haven't already guessed, this is going to be the third episode in this series, and I will be going through three animals that abuse drugs and alcohol. And for our first creature with a drug problem, we will be heading to South America, as we have the jaguar. The jaguar is one of the most loved big cats in the world, and it is also one of the most formidable. This cat truly is the king of South America, but this king also has a drug problem. Although this story takes place in South America, if you want to see an interesting relationship between cats and drugs, all you will need to do is look at your back garden. Although catnip isn't a drug in the traditional sense, it does seem to have a euphoric effect on some cats. Lots of cats are very attracted to catnip, and will actively seek it out in their environment. Down in South America, there is another cat that enjoys a euphoric plant, but of course this cat is far larger and far more dangerous. The jaguar is a very stocky and well-built cat, and its power means that it can take down many prey animals that other predators can't. Its name translates to he who kills with one leap, and this name needs no explaining. Even though the jaguar is the third largest cat after the lion and the tiger, it is very good at keeping itself hidden. They are known for being incredibly elusive, and their prey only spot them when it's too late. They are true masters of their ecosystem and will prey on almost anything they come across. Unlike some other cats, they aren't afraid to target aquatic prey, and famously go after caiman by crushing their skulls. As you might be able to guess, being an apex predator can be quite tiring, and if you were a jaguar, you might want some downtime. These big cats really know how to relax, and it's definitely not by getting high on catnip. Jaguars don't get high on a substance that only affects cats, but they get high on a substance that also affects us humans. Just like smaller cats, jaguars will eat vegetation to cleanse their stomachs or force regurgitation, and this is where they come across the leaves of a certain vine. Jaguars are known to eat and interact with the hallucinogenic leaves of the ayahuasca vine, and as some of you might know, these leaves contain DMT. DMT is a strong hallucinogenic drug that can distort your view on reality. In fact, large numbers of people travel to South America just to take this drug, and some describe it as a life-altering experience. Strangely, us humans are not the only ones enjoying this drug, as jaguars have been observed getting high off these leaves and acting very kitten-like. This behaviour hasn't just been witnessed by experts, as it was also seen in a BBC documentary. In this documentary, the jaguar seemed to be experiencing the hallucinogenic effects of the ayahuasca, and seemed to be really enjoying itself. As well as causing an intense high, this plant also has other benefits, as it's able to cleanse their body of parasites, and also help their overall digestive tract. Some people have even claimed to have seen jaguars on their ayahuasca trips, so it seems like this drug and the jaguar are very connected. So even though some people think ayahuasca is only a drug that us humans take, it seems like these big cats are very into it too. But for our next drug users, we won't be heading to anywhere specific, but we will be heading into the oceans, as we have both the dolphins and the sea lions. Dolphins and sea lions are both very intelligent creatures, and are often able to outwit their prey. In some parts of the world, they can be found in the same ecosystem, and they often share the same prey and also the same enemies. Out of these two groups of animals, the dolphins seem to be the most intelligent, and are famous for their many inventive ways of catching their prey. Although there are dolphins in both freshwater and saltwater, in this video I will be focusing on the marine dolphins. This is because unlike the jaguar, the dolphins and the sea lions don't get high by consuming a plant, but instead they get high by abusing another animal. There are over 120 species of pufferfish worldwide, but the marine pufferfish tend to be more colourful, and on average larger. As well as being very interesting, marine pufferfish can also be very dangerous, as they have a very unique and fascinating way of defending themselves. When threatened, not only do they fill themselves up with as much water as possible, but some species also cover themselves in spikes. If this wasn't enough to deter a predator, they also have another line of defence, and this comes in the form of chemical warfare. Tetrodotoxin is a potent neurotoxin, and it can be found in most marine pufferfish species. This toxin can be extremely dangerous, and in most cases is fatal to us humans. This is why you need to train for years to become a Fugu pufferfish chef, as one mistake can mean that you kill your customers. As I've already covered, sea lions and dolphins are very intelligent creatures, and in most cases they know not to target pufferfish. This means that they don't interact with them to kill them, but strangely they do still interact with them. It's not uncommon to see dolphins or sea lions swimming around with pufferfishes in their mouths, and it almost looks like they're playing with them as part of a game. 
In most cases, it looks like the puffer fish aren't having the best of times, but the dolphins or sea lions are always enjoying themselves. It's thought that the dolphins and sea lions are getting a slight high off of the puffer fish's poison, but really they do have to be careful. If they were to eat part of the puffer fish, it could mean certain death, but from the outside, it looks like the risks are worth it. Even if you are jealous of the dolphins and sea lions, I don't recommend biting a puffer fish, as it could be one of the last things you ever do. After playing with these puffer fishes, the dolphins and sea lions tend to enter a trance-like state and seem to be fascinated by everything in their environment. For the most part, it seems to have no negative effect on their health, but I'm sure many puffer fish around the world are rethinking their defensive strategy. But for our next story, we can head to pretty much anywhere around the world, as our next animal is mostly seen as a domesticated animal. In our last story, I will be talking about horses, and unfortunately, this last story is a little darker. Horses are very strong and powerful creatures and have always had an interesting history with humans. For thousands of years they have followed us into battle and war, and they've also helped us as a form of transport and an aid to farming. This is why many people only view horses as a domesticated animal, but in certain places around the world you can find wild horses. Unfortunately, some of these wild horses are very rare today, and one was even brought back from the brink of extinction. If you are a horse owner, you may already know of the drug that I'm going to go through in this story, as it goes by the common name of loco weed or crazy weed. In fact, loco weed is not the name of a single plant, but instead this is a common name given to plants that produce swainsonine. Swainsonine is a phytotoxin that's harmful to livestock. These plants are a big problem in the southwestern United States, and strangely in some cases, horses do seek them out. Loco weed is a mind-altering drug, and it is usually highly addictive to horses. Horses typically avoid loco weed, but once they have sampled it a few times, they can become addicted to it. This means that they will try to find it again and again, and this means that they are constantly poisoning themselves. Horses who eat a vast amount of this loco weed are known to suffer from severe depression and eventually become lethargic and slow-moving. Eventually, the horses can succumb to the poison, but strangely, they aren't the only animals that are affected. These plants are also toxic to cattle, sheep, goats, elk, and even cats, and costs livestock owners $300 million a year in the US alone. So really, this drug seems to be a definition of a harmful drug when it comes to these horses, and if you are a horse owner, it's best to look out for these plants. If you think you know of any other animals that get drunk and high, then let me know down in the comments below, because even though I've done three videos on this subject, I still think there's more stories out there, and I'd like to hear your ideas. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. But until next time, goodbye.